the only place where you can live the adventure. Marvel Superhero Island, Universal Orlando Resort. For more information, call toll free 888 406 5140 or visit universalorlandovacations.com slash marvel. Two free theme park tickets with a stay of four or more nights. Yeehaw! Orlando! Welcome, dear listener, to our podcast. Jeff and Rick present Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Where we journey through each issue of comics that include a member of the most underrated Marvel series from the 80s while drinking beer. Analyzing awesome and amazing adjacent adolescent adventures and absorbing alcohol. I am Jeff. And I am Rick. The dictionary defines random banter as a one-sided or overwhelming victory. Also, it can be used to describe when you leave quickly in order to avoid or escape something. Random banter time, buddy! Talk to me, tell me tall tales and tantalizing tidbits of trivia today! Ring, 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 ring! This is Webster calling to tell you that you are plagiarizing from our dictionary. Thank you, and please stop. Goodbye. <laughs> but what was I plagiarizing them from? The word runaway. Oh my goodness, you are correct. Let me tell you, uh, that would not fit on Wordle. It is surprising the number of words that won't fit on Wordle. There are many a word that I'm trying to put in where I'm like, how about saddle? No. How about tonight? Wait, no. How about... It's so many words where I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'll use this word. Uh, shield is six words. I'm great with doing six words, six letter yeah. words. I've tried using the print symbol. Doesn't work. Yeah. Really upset about that. <laughs> a lot of emojis. <laughs> That's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about something else. Did you else. want to talk about why I picked the Webster Dictionary for Runaway? Because we're still doing Runaway. Because we're still doing Runaway. Also, because there is an overwhelming victory, and also there's some running away. This is true. This is true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about any of that, though. I want to talk okay. about one thing. One yes. thing in particular. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to <laughs> Jeff. Tomorrow's your birthday. Yeah, yes, like, it is. Like, from when we're recording. Not when this I, is coming out. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'll, Deal with I'll it, be, folks. I'll be well into being 50 by the time that this comes out, yes. I didn't ask, but is this 50? It is. It's the big 5-0, so I guess it's time to shuffle off this mortal coil and, I don't know, cry about my misspent youth and how my knees and back hurt, which I've been doing since high school. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and, and since it's tomorrow, i got to go out and figure, find 50 things to buy you for your 50th birthday. <laughs> I got you a pack of slaps. What are those? <laughs> 50 of them. Slap, 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 Tell slap, 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 slap. I'm going to get you two packs of cigarettes and two singles. Oh, very nice. <laughs> very, very nice. You've, you've wanted to start smoking, right? Yeah. There you yeah. go. Hey, here's two bits, kid. Go buy yourself something <laughs> special on your big day. Hey, who's a big boy? You're a big boy. Knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. Happy birthday. Uh, I mm -hmm. hope that you have fun wherever your life takes you as you, you know, start to go downhill from the, from the wonderful youth of 49. Yeah, 40s is when you start sliding down that slippery slope. That's when everything starts kind of breaking a little bit more. Yeah, no, it's going to be fun. Tomorrow's going to be a barbecue day. So, mm, mm, mm. barbecue, barbecue, mm -hmm. barbecue. And barbecue, then barbecue, barbecue over at my house, too. Which... Yes, it is. I'm going to be picking barbecue up and taking it over to Rick's. And we shall uh, celebrate my aged hood together. Yay. Yay. It'll be fun. And for funds, I will even let you ride on my wife's tricycle with the electric assist uh, motor on the front tire. Not a euphemism, but that would be cool. I would actually like to try that out. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. And I mean, it's, you can, this is a preparation for you because it's a tricycle. And this is what, you know, older people actually ride is tricycle. <laughs> Our little rascals, my little scooter. And the motor assist, you know, you can start getting used to using it, you know. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, it's going to be nice. I, can, I think I might even have a cane around here so you can like hold it up in your hands and tell Shake the girls, it. you know, get, get off your yard. yard and you and gold yeah. kids and yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're going to have a lot of these shows are going to start opening up with, and I'm Jeff, and back in my day, what? Is it time for soup? No. <laughs> I will say, with the, the the puffy hair that you got going on here, and more, a little more gray oh, in there, yeah, too. I'm getting, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going Grizzly Adams. It's just I keep on wanting <laughs> to shave, and Aurora keeps every time I'm like, oh, I'm going to shave, and Aurora's like, no, soft. And I'm like, ah, come on, <laughs> can I please shave? 
Can I please? <laughs> you keep it up now, and with all the gray coming in, with it coming yeah, out, it's coming in real you're, nice. You're ready to be Santa Claus in yeah. eight months' time. <laughs> <laughs> ho ho! Be the right age too. <laughs> <laughs> Bugger. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. I'll just I'll just let it all slide downhill, and I'll really slip into that build more than I already am. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jeff! You're Thank old. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you just got a snort out of me. Uh, you suck, uh, whipper snapper. Yeah. In my day, <laughs> I guess we should go ahead and move on to the episode before I get hit upside the head with a. <laughs> Back in my day, with a virtual. We- Came through Zoom, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Back in my day, we did two sentence replays before moving on to talking about the episode. <laughs> well, why don't you give us that two sentence replay, old man Jeffrey? Victor Mancha is the man with the plan, and that plan is to try and save his mom from his dad, who turned out to be Dr. Doom, with the unexpected help of his kidnappers, the Runaways. Well, with the judicious use of teamwork, and mostly the laser that Chase brought with him, Doom is defeated and Vic's mom is safe. But then they are confused when it turns out that Doom was a Doombot, and then they are even more confused when the Doombot's owner shows up, and it's Ultron. Old man Ultron. Now that the Ultron claims Vic as his child, kills Vic's mom, and then flips Vic's switch to evil, two sentence replay is over, why don't you give me a beer and tell us what our power pack pick is? My pleasure, Danger Man, or I should say that I'm Danger Man, because I'm going to be opening up a beer that is, well, it just looks very dangerous. It looks like it's going to be a froth machine from the damage to that can. It's going to it's gonna look like something, and my, my can is a little damaged, so I'm kind of wondering how this is all going to go. But that's not taking away from what the beer is i want you to reach in that bag and pull out the beer and see if you can figure out exactly why i chose this it's in a tall can get that dust off and woof. it is ooh, ooh. <laughs> binary motherboard milk stout hello baby <laughs> that is pretty looking that's binary brewing company and that is kind of a nice green circuit board look with a a lady's face in there just kind of hidden amongst the circuitry and it's got the old uh, adapters like the vga adapters and like a usb port and all sorts of stuff on there that's really kind of cool on the can that's pretty neat story time on it is uh, it's one pint which is 16 fluid ounces good story why would i choose something called binary motherboard for this well because you either have one or you don't and vic used to and now he don't (laughs) And also, he's a robot. Yeah, we got a couple of robots in here. And actually, at one point in time, they do say motherboard. I think Ultron says you don't need a motherboard. He didn't need a motherboard, and neither do you. Yep. No son of mine's gonna have a motherboard, says old man Ultron. 5.9% ABV. This is motherboard milk stout by Binary Brewing Company. Drinking beer is a multisensory experience. We salivate in Pavlovian response to the can cracking open. The olfactory flavor and tactile receptors fire signals to the gray motherboard in our skulls. We respond by involuntarily smiling and exclaiming our approval. Motherboard. Mm. Here we establish a link between bitter chocolate and sweet cream. Lactose softens the astringency of dark roasted malt and provides the texture of nectar. This is one is as comforting as the mother's graces, but as precious as a circuit board. Oh, and that's even more precious in today's age because we're having trouble getting those good chips. Okay. We have successfully opened the beer without exploding. Yeah, no, I, I can understand why, because this is a very flat pour. This is a, not a foam machine. I kind of glugged it into my glass and it just went like, yeah, okay, cool. I'm a totally a beer. And look, uh, uh, the froth on me, it's minor, and now it's gone. It is dark. It has got nice bubbles that hang to the wall of the glass, but it's not really erupting at all. It's pretty opaque with a little translucency around the edges. So not the darkest beer that we have had, but oh, baby. Oh, you, on the other hand, have giant <laughs> foam on yours. Maybe yes. I poured a better head than I thought. It smells like a milk stout. Yes, it does. Mmm. Happy birthday to me. (laughs) That's a milk stout. Yep. It's got that lactose smooth. It's got that I'm tasting coffee. Yep. A little bitter. I I am getting the bitterness. Yeah, it is a bit bitter. I'm trying to decide if that's kind of like like a dark chocolate kind of bitter or if it's just kind of that stout bitter that comes into a lot of different stouts. According to the, the description here, it would be the bitter chocolate. 
Okay. So, and then the sweet cream. I think that what I read there is pretty much on point. Lactose, bitter yeah. chocolate, sweet cream, the dark roasted malt. That's what it is. More the coffee, the dark roasted more than yeah. the, the coffee. Because I'm kind of like, does this have coffee in it? Because it does have those notes yeah. in it without being excessively coffee heavy. I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Not too mm-hmm. bad, though. Yeah. Not the best beer that I've had, but... I definitely would drink far too many of these in a sitting. Be very willing to drink far too many of these in a sitting. I'm willing to try my luck as we wade through this final, Mm -hmm. final Runaway book. At least for now. We will be coming back to more Runaway. There is more of the series. We are just going to be stopping here and moving on to something new and exciting. And similar. (laughs) (laughs) But before we get to all of that, let's go ahead and say what the opening credits are, if you please. Runaways, issue number six, September 2005, True Believers, chapter six. Credits, writer, Brian K. Vaughn, letterer, VCs, Randy Gentile, penciler, Adrienne Alfona, inker, Craig Jung, colorist, Christina Strain, production, Jacob Chabot. Associate Editor, Mackenzie Cadenhead. Editor, C.B. Sibolsky. Editor-in-Chief, Joe Casada. Publisher, Dan Buckley. Featuring The Runaways, Nico Minoru, Carolina Dean, Molly Hayes, Chase Stein, Gertrude Yorks, and Old Lace, and Victor Mancha. Guest starring Excelsior, Lightspeed, Darkhawk, Green Goblin, Ricochet, Turbo, Chamber, and of course our villain of the episode, Ultron. I'm flying away. Set an open course for California. Goblins got to be free. Free to fly the plane that's been given me. I'm the only good goblin. So climb aboard, we'll search for some children on only one shore, and I'll try, oh sure I'll try, to find those kids. I mean, we've all been there. A friend shows up in their new car, tricked out with gadgets, buttons, four-wheel drive, etc. They want to take you out, show you how the vehicle works, play with the controls, roll through a snow-covered cemetery, and really show you how cool their ride is. And we have also had the friends who have said, Hey, can you turn down your new stereo? Yes, that subwoofer is massaging my chest just nice. Hey, let's not test the limits of your car's cornering ability. Hey, maybe we should back up and not drive through the snow-covered cemetery. Tale as old as time. Phil Urich, the former technically good Green Goblin, has been the guy in the chair. Now he is the guy with a cool new plane. And he is stretching his legs to varying degrees of respect for him as passengers. Chamber, Ricochet, Turbo, and Lightspeed. Aren't they supposed to be doing... something? You know, oh, finding kids with powers or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll get back to it. And they have a new guy in the chair to help them out doing it. An unsuited Darkhawk is happily reviewing a bank of computers, keeping an eye out for super shenanigans. Nice to be an example about how to help without being in costume. Just like the rest of the not team of not heroes who are not wearing costumes. <laughs> he said with an eye roll. Meanwhile in a mind palace. Home of the fighting history lesson. Yes, Vic Mancha seems to be Ultron's guest inside the Matrix. A gray, monotone Matrix that is also Ultron's scrapbook. We see Dr. Hank Pym making Ultron 1.0. Oh, he's just a little robot baby. And Ultron introduces this Pym dude as Vic's grandfather. Okay, it's not a traditional family, but we accept all types here. Next, we see Ultron in a fight with the West Coast Avengers, which includes his daddy and I guess his cousin, Wonder Man. All right, they beat up Ultron, right? Oh, yeah. It seems that Pym realized he really put too much evil into this Erector set and has continually tried to put the genie back in the bottle. You know, the hero way, which is 
violence. The Ultron wreckage sat on a garbage heap for a while, staring at a broken clock, thinking about all of the nifty things he would do to those meat sacks that brought him to this sticky end, when one day a young lady broke in and stole a mess of parts. This would be Vic's mom, apparently a pretty bright lady who had destroyed her future by being caught as a drug mule. Finding the functioning head of Ultron, she discovers a new purpose in life. Becoming a pawn for a robot instead of a bunch of humans. I mean, we are all working towards that goal, right? Ultron, redefining the long game to nearly old boy levels, has Mrs. Mancha help reconstruct him, build some fancy high-tech stuff, and then donate DNA and life to a human-cybernetic hybrid, a.k.a. Victor. This broke Julia Child's recipe includes some implanted memories, an ongoing metamorphosis with nanites that continues to cook, change, and evolve Victor into an indistinguishable human and a plan. Oh, we are not done yet. The implanted love of superheroes is a feature, not a bug. A plan planted by Ultron. It was to encourage Vic to go to New York, develop his powers, which were keyed to activate when confronted with superheroes, join the Avengers, and then destroy them from within. When the time was right. That is some insane forward thinking. And to cap it all off, Ultron locked himself in a tiny room with an old phone and an elaborate clock and waited. Hang on, that looks like the clock and phone that was on Dr. Doom's desk. Rightio, my birthday boy. It turns out that it was not Doom's desk after all. Ultron had that one Doom robot in storage for just such an emergency. Unfortunately, the runaways got involved. C'est la vie. So Ultron is going to have to control, alt, delete, reformat the old Vic drive and start over. Oh, uh, after Vic kills the runaways. Yeah, I do not see that happening. Sure, the kid just met them, but he seems to really like them, so why would he kill them? Because he has been destroying them for five minutes while the exposition dump has been happening. Huh? Yeah. In the real world, it looks like Chase is down and Gert is being held up in the air by an iron girder controlled by Vic. I think the rest of the team is still knocked out from the last issue. Ugh. Not a very comfortable position. No, it is not. And now that we have some context and we are back in the real world, the big U wants to finish this by Vic crushing Gert to death. And Gert, oh dear Gert, keeps up the snark by calling him an evil non-Mac computer. Okay. Just okay. She also makes a little speech about how much parents suck. But we will all become them someday anyway. And it is okay to rebel against them. Especially when one parent kills another, like Daddy Dearest did to Vic's mom. Does it work? Ya betcha it does. Because if the 21st century has taught us nothing else, computer programs listen to us when we try to verbally reason with them. It also listens to us when we ask it to do stuff, and when we are having private conversations near our phones, so that it can tailor product ads to put in our feeds. Look, all I'm trying to say is that RoboVic is an avid listener. RoboVic does a factory reset to Teenage Boy and zaps RoboDad. A newly awakened Nico quotes some Pink Floyd by saying, Shine on, you crazy diamond. ka shrink Ultron, now encased in a block of diamond, takes a timeout while the majority of the runaways regroup. Molly is still taking a little nap, but Chase comes around. Vic apologizes for being puppet-controlled by Daddy Dearest, but before they can do any more planning... Crack! Ultron busts loose. You cannot keep a good robot down. And to think, Nico went and got him such a nice bling, too. Speaking of Nico, she gives an angry and odd order to Carolina to fire a giant energy blast at the ceiling, which Carolina reluctantly does, even though it will drain her for the rest of the fight. While it may have upset Carolina, it really confuses Ultron, and it should not. Ultron has been in L.A. for a while, and he should have understood as Nico does, that searchlights always attract a crowd. And sure enough, on cue, Excelsior shows up. Turbo directs Chamber to escort the runaways out and for Lightspeed to become a sacrifice. A what, huh, what? Well, she tells Lightspeed to draw Ultron's fire, which means that she can, and does, take a laser to her personhood. Ricochet seems more successful in distracting the demented and skinned Teddy Rubskin. There is actually a nice moment where Ricochet throws one of his EMP discs at Turbo, who uses her foot jets to super speed it at Ultron, which apparently flips on his Monty Python circuit. Nothing but a flesh wound. And then we have the entrance of Darkhawk. Now we have been very dismissive of Chris Powell on the show, and with good reason. He's not great. 
and his suit makes him a downright jerk. But he's got power, raw power, and a really impressive fighting suit of alien origins. And he represents something really important when fighting something like Ultron. Darkhawk is an unknown. And after a quick right cross, Darkhawk unleashes his chest blast right into Ultron's body. Dear Ultron, you started this revenge plot as a scrap pile, and you ended as one as well. Outside, the Runaways are being denied entry to the party club by Bouncer Chamber. Hey, they're not on the list. Really, the only one who wants to go and disco with Daddy is Vic. The rest realize they are still on the Foxtrot, while Ultron and Excelsior team are at American Bandstand. Or higher. Or if you prefer, they realize that they are doing the Macarena in a cha-cha slide world. You do like beating a metaphor to death, don't you? What else is a metaphor? I swear, if you put in a rim shot... I, I just can't with you sometimes. If the kids can't go into Boogie, they're just going to do the electric slide back home. And while Chamber does not want them leaving... <clears throat> moonwalking... Off with a hostage. Gert points out that this super-powered android is now an orphan. The last thing anyone wants is for him to be lost in the social services maze. Better let Vic come with them. Good idea. Let the really dangerous son of Ultron hang with other children of supervillains. What could possibly go wrong? And yet, Chamber lets them go. Back inside, Phil joins the party from the hovering ship to see the damage. Chamber also joins the team and says that he was knocked out by the kids. He thinks it may be better to let the kids run while they watch over the Ultron parts until S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up or something. Speaking of showing up, we have another surprise guest. Rick Jones. Not THE Rick Jones? No, just one of them. You know they come in six packs now, right? Ah, <laughs> sarcasm. Clever. I know of this concept. Used by some to cover up a lack of humor and or personality, or to hide their age. Well, we are moving past this and on to more important things, like finding out what the original annoying teen is doing with these darn kids. Would you believe that he is the secret backer that has been pushing the not team of not superheroes to be a team of superheroes? Well, since I did read this comic prior to recording, yes I can. Rick Jones decided to invest the money from his book sales into supporting some young kids so that they could avoid some of the crazy stuff that he was mixed up in when he was a teen. Like radioactivity, negabands, and the British invasion. So this is just a side hustle or project for Mr. Jones. Seems like a lot of work for a group of kids. Well, as Ultron has now demonstrated, the West Coast is a heck of a lot more dangerous without the pride. Maybe they should start looking at establishing some heroes out here to take care of some of the things. Like uh, new champions or a new West Coast Avengers team? <sighs> ah. Rick Jones' books were not that successful. How about this uh, group of less expensive IPs? They even have a team name they can use already if they co-opt it from their support group. Oh, 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 wait. I just got to note that the word Excelsior is kind of copyrighted by Stan Lee and really can't be used. They will need to find another name. Hang on a second. Is it their charter all about walking away from the tights and fights? Well, yeah, but they are all adults, or nearly adults, and not kids. You know, except for those that are under 18. And anyways, who cares? This was fun, and no one really has anything going on in their lives right now, and they all seem to be down with this. So why not take a not-team of not-superheroes that want to get over the trauma of their stolen lives and form a team that wears tights and gets in fights? Yep. Everyone is absolutely on board with this well-thought-out 180 that goes against everything that they have been saying for the past six issues. Except for Chamber, who is... missing. Dot dot dum. Meanwhile, at some other place... Home of the not-fighting mysterious heads. Chamber walks into a room with three other people, none of whom show their faces. It becomes apparent that this is not Chamber, but someone using a magic amulet to look like the mutant. It's always a magic amulet. <sighs> if I had a nickel. Well, it looks like this young African-American man, whose face we do not see, was spying on the runaways and working to keep Excelsior away from them. He also calls this group of obvious teens the Pride. Da da da. Meanwhile in the Frog, home of the formerly fighting tired kids. Well, that's all just happened. End of the day, and their kidnapping victim is apparently their newest member, because... He's an orphan, because his dad is a supervillain, and because of everything the Runaways did. Poor Vic is just trying to cope with his new normal. An android monster that can charge everyone's phone. 
It's a living. Chase is not happy about the living toaster joining the gang, but Nico has a plan. Work on making him a good guy, a hero, a savior, a beacon of hope. And if that fails? Recycling plant. Ouch! Da, da, da! Next issue, not this series. Nope, we are going to leave the runaways for now and follow Julie over to the loners. But we still have this issue to cover. We still have to talk about the runaways, the front cover, the themes of this issue, a whole lot of stuff. Aren't you excited? Yes, I know you are. Okay, we have got one more Joe Chen cover to talk about here. Runaways number six, and this time it is featuring Nico. And a butterfly. Yeah, with a butterfly. She's laying down and she's all gothic and she's got a hand up and she's looking tragic and there's this very cool butterfly that's there and it looks like a couple of blood splatters mm -hmm. this has nothing to do with anything else once again this is joe chen yep. just kind of drawing <laughs> one of the characters and yep. it looks cool it's nico i mean it's like they just said give us the feel of the character give us a vibe give us not even the feel of the, of the book just a, no yeah. just the character it's just like when you think of this character what do you think just draw me a portrait of a character or characters just 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 being yeah what how do they how do they be what do yeah. you th what do you view them as and it's like I, f I see them like this and it's like okay cool slap it as a cover i like it it's good it's it's what it is i like i said i still like his art i like his cover mm -hmm. I, I oh have yeah the feeling that if i we had joe chen doing more than the cover art i think it would get a little much but mm -hmm. i like what he does with the the cover art the book art it's interpretations of the characters. I think if he was uh, doing the internals, it would be it'd be more on point. It would be following writer's guidelines and stuff. I'm I curious. I, I I'm not that familiar with his art. I'm kind of curious to go out and look at some of it to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like his cover stuff. I think it's good. Yeah. No, it looks really nice. I've I've enjoyed every uh, cover that we've had so far. It looks really really nice. Yeah, I I don't have much to say about this. It's Nico. I think she's cool. I think she's pretty awesome. And um, she's just there with her butterfly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I yep, got yep, nothing yep. else for you, man. Basically, no, it, it's what it is. Yeah. But we got a lot more to talk about because we are wrapping up this Runaway series. So let's let's get into this book. Let's talk about some things. And, and I know I just said what I said, but I'd like to start off with talking a little bit about the Pym family tree because it's insane. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> let's take a moment to really appreciate who... Who Dr. Hank Pym is and exactly what he has done and how who he's connected with the Marvel Universe, because it is a lot. Um, he actually bridges some of the gaps between Fantastic Four and some of the mutants and some. I mean, we can actually trace him to Cyclops if we wanted, I think, here. Yeah, through through a, a relationship or in a at one time in a relationship with somebody. So it's pretty nuts as far as how this goes. But they tend to look at. A lot of the androids or synthesoids as being part of the family tree when talking about Henry Penn. So you've got Ultron, you've got Vision, you've got, of course, Wanda and as a Scarlet Witch because she was married to Vision. You've got her children, which then, of course, breaches, uh, moves you over to Quicksilver, which then brings you to the Inhumans and because Quicksilver is married to an Inhuman. I mean, you can go everywhere with this large family tree and it kind of makes you realize that. <laughs> Hank Pym is somewhat in the center of the Marvel Universe, which is weird. Your thoughts? <laughs> no, he is. He's well related. He's connected. He's. I always, I always feel he's kind of viewed as more second tier kind of a hero. Even though, I mean, he's got amazing power set. He's super smart. He invents things. I mean, he could be a giant. He's a he, he's a powerhouse. He's a crafty little spy flyer with lasers. You know, it's it's just he can do so many different things, and he's always kind of like a oh yeah. And then there's Hank Pym, <laughs> joke guy. The problem is, is I think that there's a few problems with his character earlier on in the past yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of his relationship with the wasp with the uh, janet van dyne a lot of that really soured his taste of as far as a character yeah. so he was relegated to a lot of second tier status and i'm fine yeah. with that i think that he works well as a second tier character i liked him when he was uh, just dr pym in the west coast avengers yeah just a lab coat and pulling stuff out of his pockets Exactly, you know, can, I like that that aspect of him. I think that Wasp, Janet Van Dyne, I think she's much more of an mm -hmm. interesting character. I think his daughter, yeah. the Wasp that she had. Was that Nadine? Uh, I think that she, Nadia, 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 that's right. Nadia. Yeah. 
I think she's a much more interesting character. I think that there's other characters that are a lot more interesting that are around him than mm-hmm. just him. So I think that that's part of it. Plus, let's be honest, he's just another blonde white guy. And we've already got that in, you know. Everywhere? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we've done that joke or somebody did that joke before. Yeah. Is, uh, uh Hank Pym, Steve Rogers, and I don't know, name somebody. Clint Barton. Yeah, Clint Barton. Hang out. Which one's which? Walk into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting, though. I, I I like seeing the evolution of this character. And now, and now of course, we have another layer on the style. Uh, and now we have another character who is related to Hank Pym. Yeah. We have his grandson, great-grandson. Grandson. Uh, gr- grandson. Because Ultron, he made Ultron. Ultron created this character of Vic. Yeah. Ultron also created so. Ultron, created Ultron, created Ultron, created, you know, it, yeah, it's a, le- he's a legacy. Go- he's a legacy person. Yeah. Yeah. We, we go sideways yeah, on that one. It's kind of there. a serial immortality is what it really boils yeah. down to there. But yeah. But this is a definite new character mm-hmm. and it's, and it's an individual that they've created. It's also interesting. Which I like this. It's, it, it, I think it's neat that he's a, uh, I'm going to take your DNA and I'll take my circuits and I'll slap them together. And yeah, it's a cyborg, but over time, uh, your cyborg robot parts are going to become more and more human. Yeah, it's it's a flaw in the design that he did, apparently Ultron put there of making it more human. Of course, the problem is is there's only so much apparently that he can control of the programming because he's also a human being mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So it's the nanites making him more human, making him something a little akin to a robot, but with powers, but more human-like, and that brings him farther away from the control that Ultron, I guess, can have over him. Yep. And so this also shows that it's... I'm going to just state that this has broken the future Gert's future, that that future will not come to pass now because he's well, he's had the Ultron whammy and he's broken it. And so I'd say he's going to gain resistance to. Well, we don't know that. I mean... There... No, we don't know, but I'm just going to assume that you got to kill this guy. You, who knows? I'm, I'm making an assumption. Yeah. I am. I, I know from my readings, I, I think I'm a few... <laughs> few issues on the most recent series of Runaways. I know that he's been around. He's with Runaways for a while. I have to kind of read back through and see where exactly he was at. He is definitely around with the Runaways for a while after this. So, yeah, he plays a part. He plays a character. And with the future being what it is, who knows what can happen? Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Yeah, and it depends on what writer takes over it, too. Exactly. Uh, very honest, this is a character that does not exist in my world of comic reading. I do not know who Vic is. So, other than the issues that I've just read. I, I have run across him in a few other places. I know I've read him in the Vision miniseries where the Vision has developed his own family. And oh, okay. he actually goes to see his uncle. Oh, so, oh okay. Yeah, they, they, they do a few other things with him, which is kind of cool. That's cool. Let's talk about somebody else who is in the Marvel Universe, and that is Rick mm-hmm. Jones, Master Manipulator. <laughs> Weren't expecting him to come back now, were you? I was not. If I know that Brian K. Vaughn has planted some of these seeds earlier because he talked about Doctor Doom, he talked about Ultron, he talked about Rick Jones in a book. So characters he's brought up have appeared, but there's also been a lot of other leads. I was not expecting Rick Jones. I was not expecting Rick Jones. I was thinking Norman Osborn, but then they showed the mysterious benefactor in the airport, and he's like wearing Converse and jeans next to a bag. And I'm like, that's not Norman Osborn. <laughs> ah, who is it? And then when they show Rick Jones, and it's like, it's Rick Jones. And Rick Jones has done a huge amount of stuff, and I'm, sure. he's got the pull to be able to do this kind of stuff, but it's still very much along the lines of, huh, it's Rick Jones. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. I still am not expecting it. But apparently he's giving out money and Quinjets to kids who want to not be superheroes to be superheroes. Hi, yeah. kids. Do you like peer pressure? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it is a weird twist. It's not something you definitely realize. It's fun. And it's yeah. great having him here. It's great to do another twist on the storyline. Mm-hmm. I think this is probably one of my negatives of this book, though, is... And also, it's my negative of what they do next with these characters in the next part okay. of the series. I don't really buy just this twist at the end. I thought it would have been much better if Rick Jones came in and said, I'm behind all this. You know, I want you guys to do this. And them all going, no. 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 We yeah. don't want to do this. We want to take the money to not do this anymore. And I think that was what you originally wanted. 
I would have been much yeah. happier with that. But that's not how this one ended. Here's the thing. I'm only saying that because I've read the next part of this. Okay. I think that if I had seen, if they had done something with this team and they had moved forward and made them a real superhero team that was doing this kind of protective work out here, mm -hmm. then I could say, okay, it would have been interesting to see their fights and struggles. Yes. But once we get in the next book, you're going to both, you're going to be like me saying, well, and that looks like it didn't last long. So. Okay. Well, I'm curious to see where that's going to go. But it, them agreeing to be heroes was such a flop. It was yeah. such a massive flip flop because they had just all been talking about it. Where it's just like, no, we're not. And then uh, Darkhawk, Chris Powell, stepping away. I yeah. respected him for that. Where he's like, I'm going to be the man in the cheap chair. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I I will help you how I can. I'm sorry I can't be there to be eyes in the sky, but I I can't. And then I, he pops in I liked, and does stuff, I, and it's like I liked how he did come and take care of Ultron, and I would have yes. I would have been happy with him saying, "No, that's it. Yeah, that's because it. I'm done." He, because all that was Ricochet even even said it when they're you know they're like, "Whoa, what happened to Ultron?" And it's like Darkhawk went off the crazy rails again, but at least he was in the right zip code, right? Which is fantastic because it's like yeah, because even when he he comes in, he gets a glory shot stepping in. Up, you know, upskirt shot where he's standing tall and powerful and then blasting Ultron after punching him. It's like, yeah, but all the while he's doing that, he's basically crazy man talking. Right. And But he's in the right position for it. Yes. This is finally, and, this is what his suit wants. I can kill something. Yes, kill something that's is not human. I was about to say he doesn't have a soul, but I think we're, the world, the jury's still out on whether Ultron's got a soul mm -hmm. or not, but still. This was acceptable use of his power. But then to have him go, you know what? I think we're up for the responsibility. It's like, no. you weren't five minutes ago. No. Julie just going, oh, I haven't had any of my, my auditions pan out, so I'll be a superhero again. Everybody literally was just super on board, except for Chamber. And then that turns out he was actually a secret bad guy. Of all of them, I can go with Julie and a little bit of Ricochet. I can just see them kind of like... This is fine. We can deal with it. Yeah. But Ricochet joined because Julie joined. Ricochet yeah. likes Julie. Yeah. And so when Julie was like, yeah, my auditions haven't panned out. I'll totally join. Ricochet was then like, well, then I'm in. Yeah. Because he likes her. Well, he likes ladies. <laughs> From what I know of him, he likes Julie. Yes. I don't know how old he is. I know Julie is 15, and I'm going to start old man probleming this. But uh, I want to point something out here is mm -hmm. we got that she was 15 from the internets. I have read a little bit more ahead and got myself caught up on some things. And in the next series, there she actually says that she is 17, which is a whole other other problems. Okay, but, yeah. Okay, so they may call her 17. Anyways, I don't know where the real answer is. That's what she's calling herself now. So still, she's still 17. She's still mm -hmm. underage, folks. Yeah, okay. She's, yeah. <laughs> Let's just move on from that. But it was just, it was a surprise flop to have people that were yes. like, not a team, not heroes, not a team, not heroes. This is a one-off gig. Yeah. We're doing this for the group that's trying to help us, who needs to get back on track to help us. Let's be a superhero team, because a, an aging rock star said to. Eh, okay. Uh <laughs> I guess, I guess there's worse reasons to sure. do things, honestly. <laughs> Looking back at this whole thing that happened in these six issues, this was all the runaways' fault. If they decided mm -hmm. not to act on what Future Gertz said, mm -hmm. Victor's powers would not have activated. Excelsior wouldn't have got pulled into this. They wouldn't have had to do everything that they did. Victor's mom would still be alive. Uh, Victor wouldn't have found out about Ultron at all yet. All of this is squarely on the feet of the Runaways. Yes and no. Vic was programmed to go to New York at 21. Yes. Where he would then fulfill his future destiny with Gert and kill everybody. Possibly. Rick Jones was going to hire out Excelsior to go hunt down the Runaways anyway, whether they were involved or not, because they were looking for them before Vic. It, it would have been a whole different kind of thing if, if Vic wasn't involved in there. Yes, but it would have been very similar. Eh, maybe. I still put this on the runaways. You can put it on the runaways, but I think that I think what they did was accelerate a timeline. Okay. But I think that the stuff with Rick Jones and Excelsior going after the runaways was going to happen anyway. The only difference may have been 
that Dark Hawk may not have shot them out of the sky because they were like kids with a gun in a school and they had <laughs> kidnapped a kid from a school without guns, but with guns because they had lasers, lasers, cheese hit lasers, and it was awesome. Dark Hawk would have found some reason to be really horrible there. So we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll let have. that go as it is. One other thing I wanted to say is, or ask you and throw out there is, what have you thought about the Runaways? You have now read all six of these. I, I want to point out too, and I probably came up in my conversation with my daughter on the last episode, is that she has read the entire first series okay. to catch up with this. So ah. she has liked what she's read so far, and she wanted okay. to read the entire first series, so she did. But how have you liked this so far? Is this something you want to go out and read more of? I would be willing to read more of it. It is not my favoritest of things. It's not my most favorite series of books that I've read. I have read much worse for much mm -hmm. longer. So I would be more than willing to read more of The Runaways. I'm still getting... I got a feel of the characters, but I still don't know the characters. Mm -hmm. I've got the paint strokes yeah. of these characters and their past. I, I kind of like, yeah, I get it. Because they, they put it pretty forward on that. Nuance-wise, eh, still a little touch and go. Gert is the leader except for when Nico steps up yeah. and tells people to do stuff. Uh, some I forget Carolina's there. Uh, you know. I think if you read the first series, you might mm -hmm. have a better appreciation for it. You might have a little bit more rounding out of the characters and see exactly I would because what they come. You yeah, are because coming in the middle of them. It. Yeah, you yeah. are coming in the middle of this. I'm getting dropped into the middle story. It was like my introduction to Buffy the Vampire Slayer after like the first episode where I was like, this is not too great. And then I popped in because uh, a girlfriend loves the show and they were doing a, a season finale. And I'm like, why is that dude a vampire? Who's a werewolf? <laughs> Why is this going on? I I don't get it. And then mm -hmm. I then the a season later came in and Hush came out and I was like, well, that was amazing. And then I became a, a Buffy fan. <laughs> I've liked whatever. Okay. I I'm enjoying it. I would totally read more. I I think I like this better than New Warriors. How about that? Okay. So <laughs> early New Warriors is better too. But yeah, that's what I've heard too because we came in middle yeah. late of New Warriors. But I don't think you're. But I, I still don't think you're wrong there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, another thing that that you are missing is you are missing the last member of this team who has not shown up yet, and that is Alex Wilder, and he was the other member of the kids when they first started out. His parents were part of the pride, and he was the real leader of the group. His power or his skill was like his parents. He was a planner. He was the leader. He was the one who can organize. And he was the one who actually was successfully leading the kids early on and probably would have continued to do so if he hadn't decided that he wanted to uh, stab them all in the back. Yeah, go um, <laughs> stay evil and then get dead. Yeah. Their parents wanted to have the kids sacrificed and he was willing to go through with the sacrifice if he could still be alive and he ended up being the sacrifice. So, yeah. It, it's a whole thing. He is pretty interesting character and I will say this for you is that he does come back. There is a lot of things that come on in the next as the series progresses, where he is returned. It is kind of hinted a bit, and this is spoilers if anybody wants to continue on with everything, but the people we saw at the end, the kids that were in that room were actually Alex's friends that he used to do online gaming with, and the hmm. African-American gentleman was actually his father, a younger version of his father, a teenage version of his father that was pulled from the past. <laughs> and he found out what happened, and he's trying to fix this. And he's utilizing Alex's friends to do so. So it's a whole lot of soap opery drama. Oh, yeah. Especially if, when you throw some time travel in there. Oh, time travel's all over this. Excited so, about the evil twin. <laughs> so it's there's a lot more that goes on with all of this stuff. And, yeah, there's a lot of soap opera in this entire thing. <laughs> I like the series. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's enjoyable. We are going to be coming back to it because the Runaways do cross paths with our Power Pack characters once again a little ways down the line. Actually, it's going to probably be a few years from now. Well, we actually are going to see the Runaways be again once we get to Avengers Academy. There's going to be a crossover that occurs there. But we are going to come back to the Runaways series proper in a few years down the line where right before we get into future foundation. So look forward to that. In the meantime, final thoughts on this runaway issue, Jeff, 
let's talk about the Gallery of Greatness. Mm Mm-hmm. What kind of funny things did you find in here? What kind of pieces of art book do we need to throw up on this walls of our cave that we are going to leave for a while? My joke backup one is on page eight, and I call it Ultron Has Time on His Hands. Time on my hands. Yep, and this is the bottom left-hand panel, and hes uh, it's Ultron, and he's holding his clock that he recovered from the uh, garbage dump, I'm going to assume, that his head was forced to stare at for years. And then uh, he's got the old phone that he's talking on, and <laughs> he's got time on his hands because he's sitting in a small, cheap room with a nice desk and an old phone and an old clock. I saw that one, and I would have liked the one a lot better if it was the scene before that, mm-hmm. where he was just sitting there. In the room with the clock and the phone, just staring at them, yeah. and just, just doing in, nothing. In, in, in the in yeah. the in the in the power saving mode, just mm-hmm. waiting. Yeah. That's the scene that I wanted to see. I, him like, it was boring, you know, because yeah. <laughs> it seems like it was maybe a chess set on there that he is just constantly playing the chess set. You know, that's, that's all he's Something. doing. <laughs> yeah, he just had a tiny off grid room in the middle of nowhere that uh, Vic's mom was paying for rotary phone and a clock that's it let's move forward to page 24 and this is after chamber comes in the room with his teenage friends and before Mm -hmm. he drops his disguise and we see this shot of these three kids sitting at this table they're eating chinese food and one of the kids is wearing a t-shirt and the t-shirt says magneto was right (laughs) (laughs) i have a shirt very similar that says, Magneto made some valid points. It's the same mm-hmm. design, but it says, Magneto made some valid points. And I got that from Jay and Miles explained the X-Men. But I saw that, and that made me chuckle. So, yeah. Magneto I you might- was right. I didn't pick this one because I was like, you know what? I bet Rick is going to really dig on this one quite a little bit. Because it's kind of, just on its own, it's kind of a funny scene. Mm-hmm. Yep. What else you got? My top joke one is on page four, and I call it Dark Hawk's Leak Gaming Setup. <laughs> and this is when he's the man in the cheap chair. He's just in some patched wall, dingy looking place with a bunch of CRT monitors just stacked up over themselves and just like a bunch of walls plugged into a uh, you know outlet and there's even a broken one next to him and it's just it's just Oh, imagine your cool sci-fi, high-tech, multi-monitor setup. Nah. Your high your high-speed gaming rig, because you are elite pro gamer. And this is just budget. No, this, this is, is busted budget. It's great. This this is just old salvage TVs. And I'm not yeah. sure exactly what they're saying. Is it just attached to different CR closed circuits TV or cameras or what? But I mean, I'm not sure what information these TVs are giving him besides. Saturday Night Dead. I mean, really, Basically, it's, yeah. it's... He he does say it because he's talking to Mickey, and he says, yeah. but I'm scanning, like, 300 different weather and traffic cams across L.A. Yeah, it's yeah, so still... It's, it's just, it's like, just whatever yeah. local stuff he can get access to. But ridiculous. it is ridiculous. Yeah. It is basically just what... It's opening a whole bunch of web browser t- tabs, and all of them are in different ODOT, and there's is what a, we have here. And there's music coming from one of them, and you don't know where it's at, and it's going to drive yeah. you crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's just nuts, because you're like, yeah, it's like popping up somebody's old MySpace page, where all the music starts playing forever, <laughs> and you're like, could it just shut up? So, yeah, I, it's... you know, I, I said I was sorry, okay? Leave it alone. <laughs> I haven't I haven't gone to my MySpace page for a while. Okay. Why'd you make it my screensaver? <laughs> Because I'm evil. <laughs> Speaking of evil, go forward a page, and this is the one I call, if you build it looking evil, it's going to turn out evil. Mm-hmm. And this is where we see Hank Pym building Ultron 1.0, and it is a evil looking furnace. I mean, yes. <laughs> it is. It's an evil furnace. It's an evil furnace. He made it looking evil. And if he's surprised why Ultron became evil, it's because you made it look evil. You give it a bunch of tentacles and stuff, too. Yeah, it's, it's just... It looks angry yeah. and evil. It's no. not come out, gonna come out singing Ronald McDonald songs, man. No, it comes out going like, I am Cuddlebot 1000, yeah. hug children. And you're like, no, I'm no, totally cool. Must hug children. Put a plunger on it and just get it done with. Daleks exactly. rule the earth, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's move on. What do you got for your top ones here? What's, what's your good art? My backup best one is on page 17, and I call it 
Dark Hawk has entered the facility. And this is that top half panel of Dark Hawk in his all his glory coming into the warehouse. And it's the it's the upshot. He looks powerful. He's built. He's strong. And he's ready to do some business. He, you know, because he's talking to Ultron. He's just like, you're a robot, which means I don't have to play nice. So he's ready to just, like, let his crazy out. Yeah, yeah, it, it's him. He's coming in. He's looking good. He's looking for the fight. Mm -hmm. It's a nice picture of Darkhawk. It really is. It, I, it I is. Think, it's great. Yeah, I think the, the artwork in this book, I don't think we've talked about it enough. It is all really good. I like yep. it. It's not a traditional comic book format art. But it is I, not. But I like it because of that. It's, it yeah. fits these characters. It fits the mood. It fits the setting. And that's what works with this. I'm used to seeing a more cartoony looking light speed, but this is lights. This is Julie Power as a teenager. And mm -hmm. this artwork fits her. So I like how it all works together with all the characters. I agree. It's really good looking art. It's good. It's very serviceable. I like the way that it looks. I don't love it, but mm -hmm. I do like the way that it looks. Yeah, that's fair. Let's go to page 13. Carolina Dean has been told to blast a hole in the ceiling. She's made a new sunroof, and you see her light blast going out, and it's not a straight beam. It's kind of like a billowy cloud that's busting yeah. upwards, and it's like really a wave. pretty. Yeah, like a wave. Yeah. And I call this one, it's probably just special effects. It's probably just special <laughs> it's probably effects. Just special. Yeah. I would see a lot of people in L.A. going, eh. Swamp gas. Swamp. Well, no, not that, that's, that's Florida. <laughs> that's Florida. Here they're like, pfft. Industrial light magic mm -hmm. and whatever. <laughs> In New Zealand, they were like, Weta works. Weta. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, they're near Wellywood. Wellywood. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. So, yeah, that's what's my backup one. And do we both have the same top one? Is it on page 18? Yeah. Did you call it focused aggression? I call it Ray of Sunshine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that is a picture of Dark Hawk, chest crystal blasting all of Ultron away. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's Dark a full Hawk, page. It's Dark Hawk's little ray of sunshine, saying, "Let the sunshine." Yeah, it, it, he just is destroying Ultron, and it is yeah kind of cool looking. Apparently, Dark Hawk is a big gun. Yeah, because he stepped in and did what two teams couldn't do. Yes, 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 yes. And we, we are going to be seeing a bit more of Darkhawk because he is going to be in our next series we're covering. So Fun. <laughs> before we get to that, though, let's talk about some rubber and glue moments. Mm -hmm. What is the best or most childish insult in this book? Jeff, you are nothing more than a speaking spell. Ooh. <laughs> I remember somebody telling that to Vic. Yeah, yeah. Which that was, was, I think, Gert. That was Gert. And she, it was one of the insults she did. And there was a lot of... Those little kind of insults. Yeah. I like that one. First, it's a bit of a time and place type of thing. Mm -hmm. Calling him a speak and smell. <laughs> there, there's something clever and fun and nostalgic about that. And yeah. I had to appreciate that. So that was my backup one. What do you got? I have one on page four. And it's when the good green goblin is flying around his with passenger goblin jet, mm -hmm. the Excel. Turbo's talking about the whole point of our organization is showing young people that there are healthy alternatives to dressing up in costumes. Chambers' response is, no offense, love, but have you caught a glimpse of yourself recently? It's like my mom always said, Jono. Do as I say, not as I do. But I was just like, have you caught a glimpse of yourself in a mirror? What yep. are you talking about? Yep, yep, yep. Do as I say, not as I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things we say to our kids all the time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> why? Because... Because we say that to our kids and what our kids say back to us, page 15, and from out of the mouths of Ultron, you soulless animals are all the same, <laughs> slow and inaccurate. <laughs> He's yelling that at, at Ricochet, who was throwing discs at him. Soulless animals, slow mm -hmm. and inaccurate. Oh, yeah. Gotta love that's it. That's a good one. That's, that's a, a great that's one. A, that's a lot right there. A lot. Lot. A lot to pack in. That is a great one. That is a great choice. What do you got, sir? Mine is on the last page. It's page 26, and it is Chase talking to the team because he's saying, if you're seriously letting that thing join our crew, I'm officially not the dumbest guy on the team anymore. <laughs> I love it because it's self-deprecating, but also it's, it's a good burn on everybody else. And it's completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's also completely wrong. I'm sorry. I'm going to put down my money on, mm -hmm. well, he is ripping on everybody, uh, but 
no, 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 no. I don't even need, no, no. <laughs> but speaking of the best and the worst, the most popular and the most shunned, we need to identify the child who was the best and the worst in this series. Mm -hmm. Jeff, who do you have being the worst? I'm going to preface this with, it was a little bit hard to pick anybody because everybody kind of did stuff. Yeah. But everybody kind of did stuff, but they all kind of like did little tap in things, little tip, little yeah, tippy yeah. tippies. But I am going to say the worst kid was Chamber. Okay. All right. Uh, that's just because he was actually a spy, secret spy. Uh, he was a Hydra most, spy. Mostly because he was a Hydra agent or a teenage uh, whatever he is. He was a spy. Yeah. So at the end, you find out he was a bad guy doing bad guy things. And I was like, okay, there's that. He also let the runaways escape. <sighs> I monster. didn't have a problem with that actually. I'm, I'm, yeah, I was fine. Yeah, I was fine with it. It was just, I had to pick somebody. No. Nobody was super bad, so I'm going to pick Chamber mostly because he was. A spy. I'm a bit on the same path, and I I you're going to say go, Vic, aren't you? No, I'm going to oh, say okay. Molly. Ooh. It may not be fair, but she slept this one out. <laughs> she was asleep from page one to page nine. She muttered I, some stuff a couple of times. She muttered some stuff, and I think at one point in time you see her walking onto the thing. But I mean. She no, was she out. was on the back of uh, Old Lace. She was on the back of Go, Old Lace. Yeah. Uh, they were taking her in, and she no, was no, like, she, with the, our, last page, the last page, she is she is up, and she's standing on the ramp. But oh, okay. still. Just prior to that, though, she was getting carried by Old Lace, it. and she's like, are we home yet? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, she was So out. I, I had to give her the nod on that one, saying, you know what? Everybody did something. You did nothing. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give her the worst on that one. She didn't okay. even show up to the fun fight. No, she did not. She was the <laughs> I, I did love the, there's a thing where they're all talking and stuff. And it's just like in the background is yeah. a snoring Molly. And yeah. they're like, yeah, Molly zonked out, but she's fine. She's fine. She's fine. <laughs> just in the background, one shot, just like pointing, going somewhere over there is a teammate. They're, they're okay. They're, they're worry about so who's the best? And this is the same problem I think we're going to have. Yeah. Who is the yeah. best? Who really stood out? I, I didn't want to give it to Vic myself. I, I just, yeah. there was a lot that was going on there. I may be wrong in this one, but I ended up going with Nico. Okay, I and, fully see why. And she had a couple of clutch plays, and she was very yep. forward thinking on Shine things. Shine on you, crazy diamond. Yeah. She, 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 you know, shoot a hole in the sky. I know yep. people are looking for us. Yep. We need that help. There was just a lot of things that she was doing that was thinking ahead. She was in control of the team. For the same factors, I could have also chose Gert because Gert did a couple of good things as well. But I, I went Nico for mine. I fully understand why you picked Nico. I picked Gert. Yep. And it was for the reasons you know. Yeah, it was because she is the one who de-triggered Vic. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that was a big thing. Yes, it was a big thing. It's just, there was that, and there was a couple things that Nico did. So I kind of, yeah. I went, there was more she, little it, things that, that were going on with Nico. That's Gert, the, Gert also, Gert's, I think, two contributions were de-switch Vic, and she also convinced Chamber yeah. to uh, let them go. Although, I don't think that was really a hard, I, yeah, Chamber was overly. ready to let them go. So, yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah, because he didn't want them getting together because right. of whatever reasons anyway. Although, man, what a long con that was, because that, it's like, okay, yep. I'm going to go to this superhero support group. On the off chance, they get contracted to try and hook up or get the Runaways. We don't want that to happen. because you know, That would be like me going, it's like, okay, Rick, I need you to go to not the closest 7-Eleven, but the second closest 7-Eleven well, to you. So, you know. I, I think the idea was is that he saw this group and he was thinking that this might be something they might try to do. And I think he was also trying to find a way, if there's going to be anybody who's going to be tripping across this team, mm -hmm. it's going to be these guys. And it's going to be okay. better for me to do this with this team than mm -hmm. be by myself. So I can see it. There's a, And once again, we're talking, it. this is teenage Papa Wilder. He is a master planner. So he yep. is he's the master chess master. Let's talk about top grades, though. Where does this issue fit with the rest of the books that we have been covering? We've got top of the list still, Uncanny X-Men, Volume 1, Number 205, Wounded Wolf. Not going to go mm -hmm. there. Middle list right now, we've got issue number four. That's where the kids figure out who Vic's daddy is. And at the bottom of the list, we have the second issue of this series where they're hunting down Victor and he discovers he has powers. So this is the ultimate conclusion for this little arc. Mm -hmm. It's wrapping everything up. Is this top, middle, or bottom? What are you thinking? Middle-ish. Okay. Middle-ish. I think it's upper middle. I think it was better than a True Believers 4 where the kids are trying to figure out who Vic's daddy is because that was that was a lot of talking sure. heads. That was a lot of talking heads. You like the uh, double twist of the kids from the last episode more than this one? It's really close. Yeah. I thought this was a good I thought this was a good issue. I Here's thought it the was thing. a good rap. I, I'm willing to drop it below there because 
there's a couple of parts that this it feels like it failed on us a little bit. Yeah. I don't entirely buy the Excelsior team going with Rick Jones's idea. Right. Yeah. I, I think that that upset me the most. I think I'm fine with the kids getting off the pick. I like how they just walk away into the night. That is a <laughs> runaway style. We don't have to be flashy. We just have to get away. That's what we're good at. So yeah. I appreciate that. I think it's just that one thing that kind of upset me a little bit. So I'm willing to put it out to the new number four. I'm pro that entirely. I think that's a great spot for it. All right. All right. We are moving through this and we are down to our beers now. Mm -hmm. We have chosen Motherboard Milk Stout by Binary Brewing Company. I'm liking this fine. I yeah, like, I like a good it. Milk, milk Stout. It's a little complex. It's got it's got some bitterness that's mm, just making it a little bit annoying for me. But yeah, I get that. I, I have I've refilled my glass. Which means that I have been drinking it. But I also sat my glass off to the side and ignored it for about 40 minutes. Yeah. And then I kind of was like, oh, yeah, I should also try and drink this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I like this. It's good. I'm enjoying it. It's fine. It is highly serviceable. Mm -hmm. Not the peak of perfection. No. But, it, but it's very good. I, it's a strong four for me. Okay. The flavor hasn't changed. It does, like you say, have that bitterness that's just does kind of pull away from the beverage. Yeah. Uh, that's just bothering me a little bit enough for me to drop it down to 3.5 mm -hmm. i still enjoyed it it's hard for me not to like a milk stout it's got to be putrid for me to really yeah. not like a milk stout unfortunately but this is this is down a little bit below for me other than the bitter this goes down really oh, smooth yeah i, I it, like it even with the bitter it goes down yeah. smoothly. oh so. it goes down really smooth with it too but it's just like so yeah three five u four for me we both enjoy it there we go there we go and what we also enjoy is when rick and his daughter, Carrie, talk about kids' perspective. So, Rick and Carrie, please take it away. Hello, Carrie. Hello, Daddy. Okay, so we are back with the final issue of Runaways, Volume 2, True Believers. What do you think of issue number six? I think it helped answer a few questions for me, like what you said last time. So oh. long ago. Um, uh, about, about how yeah. Victor was made and, and created? Yes, the DNA stuff. The DNA, using a robot, uh, using a lot of chassis, nanobytes are in there too. There's a lot of weird stuff that went in there, and it's part of Ultron's big plan, right? Yeah. Uh, did you like it? Did you buy it? Is it just enough comic book silliness to be kind of plausible? I don't think it was silly. I mean, it was kind of more serious. Did you like it, though? Uh, yeah. I, I think it may have been a good ending. It Although it did cause more questions for me in the end because they're trying to see, make sure it leads into the next one. Right. There's going to be more things that occur with the Runaways after this. And they're going to have more adventures, more uh, villains that they have to deal with. But Excelsior kind of steps away at this point, right? Yeah. Excelsior just didn't do well. <laughs> Not really. I mean, I only like Julian Excelsior. And, really? And, um, also, wait, what? Ah, I keep forgetting his name. Ricochet? Yeah, Ricochet is good, too. T to be fair, I like those two as well. Though They are two of my favorites in Excelsior. I used to like Turbo when we read The New Warriors, but I don't necessarily like this Turbo. They keep getting beat up really easily, and also they kind of fought each other in one of the others, too, one of the other issues. So it just doesn't go well for them at all. Well, it's a good thing that we are going to be following them and not the runaways as we move forward really <laughs> yep the next six issues are going to be all about the loners which is the name that excelsior is going to go by in the next six issues they couldn't use the word excelsior so why a lot of reasons apparently it's in comic book elements it's kind of owned a little bit by stan lee so they couldn't use that name they went with loners i don't know but it's what, it's what they did. Okay. So, so we are going to leave the Runaways for now, and we're going to follow the loners. Actually, <laughs> okay. I was kind of getting used to the Runaways, but then suddenly we're going to switch over. Yeah, we don't care about anybody else except for Power Pack. So we're going to follow and see where Power Pack takes us, no matter where, no matter what. So right now, at least, for example, we're going to follow Julie. Yep, we're going to keep following Julie. For a little while longer. We gotta, we're got we going to stick with the Runaways. Are we going to go to Alex next? Because I know Alex and Julie joined lots of other teams. Yeah. We are going to go follow the Loners crew for a while. And then I think in about... We've got these six issues. Uh, another small 
story in a anthology. And then there's a couple of issues dealing with Darkhawk that Julie's part of. And after that, we are going to see what Alex is up. Have Katie and Jack really joined any more teams? Nope. So we, it's kind of a dead end almost for them. It really is. Uh, <laughs> we we will see Jack and Katie in a couple of different places. But they don't they are not part of any solo stories beyond what we've seen here. Okay. <laughs> and and I mean Katie's popped up. We saw the Great Lakes Avengers one where she popped up a little bit just when they're asking if she wanted to join. But Jack, no, no. Not at all. Not at all. No. Well, I guess maybe he just decided to make to just do whatever he wants after that. Well, we will find that out. That sounds like kind of like Jack almost. Yeah. We'll find out a little bit more of them. We'll discover them together as we move forward with this. What about the runaways? What it sounds like you have liked this series so far. Yeah, and kind of enjoyed following the Runaways because it's like seeing kids being superheroes. Well, it's a good thing then that I have the rest of the series of Runaways that you can read and you can keep following what's going on with them. Okay. Yeah, there is a little bit down the line. There will be another time when we do cover about four or five issues of the Runaways. And we are going to cover a crossover that the Runaways do with Avengers Academy at one time as well. So we'll see them again, but not... We are going to see them again in our coverage, but I'll let you go ahead and read ahead and and read Mm -hmm. the books. All right. And then I can reread them. You betcha. I like rereading. (laughs) Anything else you want to talk about about this ending, though? Do you have any other questions about this ending? Oh, I think you did have one, didn't you? Who is that one guy at the Pride at the end? That is a great question. But because you have just said that you wanted to read the rest of the series of oh Runaways, gosh, seriously? I think I'm not going to tell you. I told Jeff on the main feed, and we already talked about it, but I'm just not going to let you listen to that, and you're going to have to find out on your own. Oh, my God. I hate <laughs> It's okay. It's not that far, and you're going to read them. So. Also, one other question. Who are the others? You'll find out very soon. They tell, they, they explain everything in the runways. You don't have to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's better to be surprised. Don't read the ending. Don't look for the ending. Like Grandpa? Yeah, don't be like Grandpa. He, it's like he reads books backwards. He just starts at the end, and then it slowly makes his way. <laughs> I can't handle that. I can't handle that at all. And then and then he just taunts us like, I know the ending. Yeah, you know, you need to stop listening to Grandpa. I know. All right. That's all I've got. I love you very much, honey. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Terry, it was the big Runaways wrap-up, and you've read a bunch of stuff, and you know more about it than I do. And thank you for joining us. Shout out time. We like to recognize those listeners who take the time to write in and leave us a review. And this is for episode 101, Runaways, volume two, number three, True Believers, chapter three. Al Sedano and his podcast, Resurrections, and Adam Warlock and Thanos podcast. Chad Michael Simon. Charles Gears. Chris Reeves. Clinton Robinson and his podcast, Coffee and Comics and Fan Film Fridays. Craig McNichol. Don't Google me. Andy Angle by Ghost Squad. Matthew Birdsey. Nicholas Prom and his podcast, Captain Freakout Psychedelic Radio. Professor Frenzy, it's a show. Tim Price, the podcrasher and his podcast, The Outcasters. Waffles and his podcast, Waffles and Mario Talk About Things. And I'd like to say, Waffles, quit running into invisible posts. Yeah, what did the... I want the name of that post. Nobody messes up that handsome mug. Nobody! We also like to thank our wonderful, wonderful people who give us money to do our show. And if you'd like to do so, we would take your money. Even if it's $1 a month, we'll take it. But this is to our lovely Patreon supporters, adorably astonishing and amazing Andrew Burns. Cheerfully cheeky and charming Char Logan. Challenging cheesy and chuckling Charles Gears. Destructive and devastatingly delightful Damian Witter. Dynamically dangerous and devious Doug Jones. Exciting, energetic, and entertaining Edward Verrochi. Jesting, joking, and jovial Jeff Bollier. Just jealous and jeweled Jeremy Daw. Muscly, mighty, and meticulous Matthew Birdsey. Mythical and magnificent monologuing Matthew Laserwitz. Rudely rhyming and running Rustin Fritcher. Steely, salty, and steamy Sailor Bear Zodar. Sad and sickeningly silly Shag Matthews. Strange and stirringly steady Stephen Gray. Tyrannically terrifying and tame Tim Price. Technically terrific and triumphant Todd Enoch. Why way wordy and wobbly waffles. Weird and wonderfully wacky wind. Be sure to check out the shows that we are on. 
are junior agent submissions on the MI6 Rogue Agent episodes of Honor Majesty's Secret Podcast and <laughs> my awesome show, Monthly Monday Movie Muckabout on the Longbox Crusade Podcast Network. And we have some merchandise available on Redbubble. Go to redbubble.com and search for Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Jeff and Rick present his a bi-weekly self-produced podcast recorded in front of a live studio audience of one towel featuring Cinderella in Portland, Oregon. If you would like to interact with us through the magic of the internet, you can do so through Twitter at Jeff and Rick present, our Facebook page, Jeff and Rick present, our email address, Jeff and Rick present, all one word at gmail.com, or at our website, Jeff and Rick present dot wordpress dot com. Also, our YouTube channel is at Jeff and Rick present. And if you would like to help support our show, we are on Patreon. You can find us at patreon.com Jeff and Rick present, all one word. We are also a proud supporter of the Hero Initiative, and we will be donating 10% of our Patreon donations to this great cause. We encourage everyone to give what they can to this worthwhile organization that helps the creators who provide us with such great content. Go to heroinitiative.org to find out more. Please rain review us wherever you can. Tell your friends about us or share your love for us on social media. And as always, we want to thank the powerful people in our packs. My wife Cindy and our daughter Carrie. My fiance Hillary and our daughter Aurora. We, we love, love you. you. Until next time. Costumes, Costumes off. off. Our theme music is 80s action. Also featured in this episode is Raving Energy. All music is by Kevin McLeod and Incompetent.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 4.0 license. Universe Sailor and O the K Shuns.com backslash Marvel. Correct. Not just one of them. You know they come in a sick pack. Yeah. No. Ah. Crack. Shout out time. We like to recognize those. This. And we don't want to recognize anybody because we're full of ourselves now.